Hello and welcome to your day four camp in a box. We will be doing the See Me Coilable. I'm sorry for the change of scenery. I recorded this last video at home and I don't have the space that I do at the art center. So kind of bear with me. Um, I know it's a little weird. You can see the tripod and everything, but just, just bear with me. Okay, so you're going to be getting out your clay from your bag. You should be getting... Um, maybe two small blocks, maybe it'll be a large one. It just kind of depends on how we package it. Make sure that you still have your practice clay if you want to practice anything or practice your coils. Um, if you don't have it, then it's fine. Um, and then your bag of tools and supplies, you're probably still going to be wanting your, um, your cup of water with your sponge because that's the slip that we will be using. Um, but right now I'm showing you how to wedge your clay to make sure there's no air bubbles. You can see the motion with my hand. You're going to be using the palm mostly when you're getting any air out of your clay. So you can see them like pushing down at an angle, pulling up, pushing down. And then eventually it kind of creates like this conch shape on the sides. It's actually really cool um, if you can see that. You can see like how it had that little conch shape. But now I'm just going to be taking handfuls and peeling it off. Um, these are just going to be the start to the coils that we'll be making because we are making a coil pot. And as you can see, I kind of squish it out a little bit first and then I start rolling. So now we are ready to roll and you're just going to be using the palm, but you're also going to just use, you can kind of see where I pointed to it, um, like the middle part of your fingers, sometimes the tips when it starts to get a little bit thinner. And you're going to move your hand out to spread it apart. Make sure to focus on some of the thicker areas if it seems to be uneven. So you can see how I'm just making them smaller, but not too small. You want them to be around like the size of your pinky. And I'm just going to keep on doing that for all of the mini pieces. So once you get all of your coils ro rolled out, you can start to make any designs or details that you want. You can only get the photo that is on the worksheet. So what I'm doing is just taking a long coil and simply just wrapping it around. But I'm applying enough pressure so that I know it's not going to unwrap when it's fired. Um, simply because it is still really wet clay. If it was much drier, then you would probably slip and score every area. That is touching another piece of clay but for my case scenario i'm not um so i'm just gonna be making a bunch of coils um different designs either they're balls or anything of that sense that kind of gives you the water ocean theme whether it looks like cartoon waves or any of that sort
so I've made a whole bunch of designs, um, and I'll make more as I'm going. I just need to know how much that I need. Um, I also want to say that I smoothed over the back of some of the coils because it'll keep it together more so than just rolling it and applying pressure. So here you'll see me getting the piece of wire that you have. You could use this to cut your clay, but I'm going to be using it to score it because it is a lot better than a thick piece of wood. Um, so every piece that is touching another piece, so every clay that touches other clay, you're going to want to slip and score it because this is a bowl. This is going to be the most difficult project that you will make out of all four of the projects in the box. Um, they're like different levels and steps so that you can learn different techniques along all four of them. So as you can see, I want to use this large coil as the bottom of my bowl. So what I'm going to do is use the wire and slip and score all the way around so that I can then apply just the plain circles, which I'll also slip and score. Um, make sure to have your glass of water because that's what you're going to be using for your slip instead of watered down clay. Um, if you don't know what slip is, if you don't know what slip is, basically it is just um, a clay base that we've added a bunch of water to and it is like um, really thick it's kind of lotion thickness and texture um, but it's clay and it works a lot better than water because water is actually really runny but um, for this case scenario we're just going to be using water um, because if you hand out slip to a bunch of people it might actually dry and turn to crusty clay um, in like the picking up stages or while you're working on the other projects and not this one. So water's fine, but you can see that I slip and scored all the circles and around the coil and I'll be adding water to the scored areas to keep it intact. So you do not need to be following the exact, I don't know, directions and, you know, details and decorations that I'll be doing. This is just what I wanted to do with my personal coil. Um, you can follow off of the photos if you want or anything that you really desire because it is your art project. But I do want to remind you that just like I'm doing here, I am slipping and scoring. And I do also want to remind you that this clay is really wet, or at least it should be. Mine was. So it can be hard to keep on adding pieces and then build up the walls eventually because they have a chance of collapsing if your clay is really wet. Um, but here you'll see that I have one of my rolled out coils and I'm slipping and scoring both the circles and the coil to wrap it all the way around so that they don't break apart when they're in the drawing stage. Um, I did not do a complete circle. I actually wanted it to go and mold towards the smaller um, circles. Gosh, I'm saying circles a lot because <laughs> I don't want it to just be a perfect circle. I want it to show imperfections because that's honestly what I like about my projects. So you can see that I'm doing that and then I'll be adding some more details. Um, I'll start building up a wall here soon as well. So you can see here, um, you can kind of compare the size to my hands. The bottom of my bowl is actually pretty large. I don't think it's that large in the photo, but um, I got a lot of clay and you can see off to my right how I still have a huge chunk that I don't even think I'll be using. Um, so I'm going to start building up the walls now, but like I said earlier, you got to be careful for how wet your clay is. 
if you try too hard, if you move too fast, it will fall over. Um, so if you're a younger person doing this, um, I suggest being patient, asking somebody for help, you know, anything of that sort. I am not slipping and scoring the walls as much as I have emphasized to do so. I still suggest that you guys slip and score. Um, dep I mean, if you're a beginner, slip and score. I can kind of use my hands, fingers, and all that and kind of build myself with kind of skipping some of the process that should be done. I know whether or not it's going to fall apart when it dries, um, but you might not, so I do suggest slipping and scoring. But as you can see here, I'm just pinching and bending it together, and then eventually you'll actually see me um, smooth out, I think it was the inside, um, it'll show later, to also keep it intact. But you can see how I'm trying to make sure that the walls are nice and clean and they aren't falling. Be very careful whenever you pick it up. You can see how much it moved when I did that. But again, I've worked with clay for many years, so I can kind of use my hands to figure out what's safe and what isn't. Um, yeah, so now I'm at the part where I'm smoothing over. So I think I ended up smoothing the outside of the bowl, um, just because I, I like the inside. Um, so I'm just going to be using the card, using my index finger and my thumb to hold the walls in place so that they don't move, and I'll just be smoothing. <laughs> Sorry that my head kept getting in the way. <laughs> Okay, and then after I have smoothed over the outside edges, I'll now be adding some decorations. Um, this is one of the hardest parts because when you just add the coils, they can kind of rely on each other. But when you're adding um, circles that are rolled up, it's very hard because they're kind of top heavy when they only have a small section that they can actually be connected to the bowl. Um, so I kind of worked fast. Um, I added rolled up coils, um, I added just regular circles that I press with my thumbs, um, honestly anything to add details and decorations and then keep them together and I did slip and score the areas that they would be touching each other or touching the coil underneath um, just to make sure that it's safe and then you can see that I slip and scored all of the top even though it is not all even and I added one long coil to kind of keep them together. Um, and I didn't want my walls to be exactly even either. You can't really see it because it's a top view, but if you look at it from the side, um, there's some areas that are taller than the rest. Now, I do want to show you real quick um, what I did. So it is a see me, not see me, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> it is a sea, so like water, ocean themed. So you have stamps in there that have fish. What I did is I stamped it on a piece of clay, and then I cut around it, and then I slip and scored it onto my bowl. Um, so I'm just kind of showing you here what it looks like. This is a little bit later after I've let it dry for a little bit. Um, and then you can see the different dryness. So the owl we did as our second project. You can see how that is almost completely white, almost as white as my nail polish. Um, so that's completely dry, ready for firing. You can see that the bowl is completely not dry. <laughs> it is still dark, but um, it is still like semi-hard. The nameplate that we did as our third project is not dry or is dry completely. It's all white. Um, now I'm going to be showing you how to glaze because you did get a bag of uh, four or five different glazes in there that I told you in the very very beginning not to mix up with your black paint. Um, so I'm just going to be using the white and the blue because it is ocean themed or I think I just used the blue um, so you can use these for your nameplate your owl um, you can put this on before it goes in the kiln and it will still come out the same 
so you'll be good on that. Um, but I am not going to be glazing my Rocky nameplate or my owl because I actually want to use acrylic after they're done firing. But I still wanted to show you what a project would look like if we use regular glaze, so I'm just going to be doing that for the bowl. Sorry that some parts are cut off in the video. I wanted to get it um, done because it was getting late, but I'm just going to be covering all of the bowl except for the bottom because I didn't want it to stick to the kiln in any way. Um, but thank you so much for the camp in the box and letting me do all of your videos. It meant so much to me. Thanks, guys.